Now there's quite a few ways to test an electric brake to make sure it's working. These are new brakes. You test exactly new brakes the same way as you test an old brake. You apply 24 volts to the brake. The disc smooths freely, as you can see. Now if you were testing, if you had a problem with your scooter, you were testing an old brake and the disc is moving freely, but there's still a problem, you may find out that maybe the coil is becoming weak, which is fitted in there. So an electromagnetic brake, it's a coil, and this one you can actually see the springs inside there. What can happen through time is the electric brake gets weaker after maybe half an hour's driving, 45 minutes driving. The brake will loosen off inside, it loses its power, even though there's 24 volts applied to it. And the motor will be struggling to spin because the brake isn't releasing as much. And this can take maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour uh, to take place. So it's always important uh, to, to have a look if you have a problem to feel the brake. If the brake is roasting hot after that particular time and you feel the motor and it's getting hot as well, there could be a problem with the brake. What I would do is I would remove the brake off the motor completely, take the three screws out or some of them may have four screws, take it off, leave it hanging next to the, the scooter and drive the scooter again for half an hour. And then again, feel the, the electric brake if it's roasting that's okay, feel, then feel the motor. So then you know where the heat's coming from. Is the heat coming from the electric brake or is the heat coming from motor? Usually, uh, when the electric brake goes faulty. Sometimes as well as you can see, that on the display on your tiller head where you've got your LED power supply or your analog needle power supply, the needle will move from right to left down after a given period of time. And that's the motor trying to struggle it's drawing more current from the batteries and the motor struggling is because the brake is, is in a poor condition after you know being a few years old and it starts to get weaker and it's not spinning as freely so it draws more the motor draws more current to, to spin this disc in there so that's how you test it put it on it's spinning around should be okay now everything else works exactly the same as the one with the micro switch you apply the voltage 24 volts you hear the click and it's in free wheel okay so it's in free wheel there it works fine just the power goes through into the coil back out of the coil into the micro switch and back out to the 24 volts the reason why this has got a, a disengaging lever is so that if there is a problem if you want to move the scooter you can free wheel it this way here this will still move and you can push the scooter but once it's in freewheel, you won't be able to work the scooter with the key and the lever because you don't get continuity. If you store the scooter, very important, always put it in drive. The reason for that being is, like the one we, that we just repaired there, the micro switch, that's it in there. You can hear it clicking on and off. It is important. Uh, that is a free wheel so that the wee switch pops out if you store it in the free wheel mode that switch will stay in there and if there is dampness that switch may stay in there and then you want to go and drive it and you pop it out and that switch stucks in there you'll not get continuity hence you need an engineer to come out because you maybe don't know what to look for okay but we can replace that as well it's only a few pounds we sell on our website it's not a problem you unscrew these here take these off the seals just pull these back unsolder them and resolder the new one there is also another electric brake that's four connections so what do you do here by here so many wires well with this you do again your continuity check you've got your micro switch here and you've got the wires going into the electric brake so this one's wired completely separately you've got four wires instead of two so you just trace back the wires, the heavy yellow ones, the thick wires here going to the micro switch. At the moment it's in free wheel, let's put it in drive. You can actually physically now see the wee switch. We'll put the connections in here for continuity. Doesn't matter which way you put it in. And we've got continuity. So you can see if this, uh, by testing the switch, if we put it in and out of drive, there you go, the switch is in don't store it like that 
and then we put it back in drive and we've got our continuity coming through so we know the electric brakes working fine now what we're going to do is we're going to test the continuity the thin wires of the electromagnetic brake itself the coil so we put the two connections in the thin one and we've also got continuity right some people will actually check the resistance of the coil um, to do that you'll need to set your your multimeter to the wee horseshoe bit which is uh, ohms so we'll try this electric brake here the one that's got the micro switch on it we'll stick that in here and we'll get 46 ohms great it is a new brake so you expect it to be round about that but this depends the way the manufacturers um, build their products it could be different resistance it's 46 45 for the one without a micro switch we'll take we'll try the shop rider one the shop rider one's 46 so around about 40 40 ohms um this is an older one this one here this one is a, a warner brake we can test the resistance of this you need to remember that when you do test the resistances you need to make sure that it's in the drive position so that you can see the wee switch in there so the switch for the brake is out the small wires here and that one's 30 this one's an old one 